Welcome everyone. Thanks to all participants today and to our sponsor area, the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia. The Asia Network is a digital community of 450 plus third business and young leaders, mainly across Asia. It aims promoting and sharing some insight and knowledge from experts throughout our webinars, conference and conversation series. For our webinar today, we are happy to welcome our guest speakers from Philippines, China and India. They will share their experience and expertise in countries related to agriculture and technology. At the end, we'll have a Q&A session, so please feel free to write your questions in the chat box. But for now, let me introduce you to our first speakers. GT Solis is the co-founder and CEO of Mayani, the Philippine fastest growing impact driven farm to table platform, empowering over 72,000 small orders farmers by providing them broad market access and stable livelihoods. In 2021, he received an award from the Asian Development Bank for his innovation focus. Welcome, GT Solis. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Ravi Ravidra, and uh, welcome everybody. It's nice to see and, and to be part of this platform for Asian Network. Um, you know, I was I was telling Ravindra that the theme of the webinar is actually very timely. Uh, it's tech for good in agriculture. I'm calling all the way from Manila in here and allow me to actually share very, very briefly our story for Mayani and a couple of insights uh, when it comes to our experience here in the Philippines. So I'm um, like what Ravindra mentioned very justly in his introduction, I'm I'm the co-founder and CEO of Mayani. And as a farm to table platform, we're building a sustainable agri value chain in the Philippines uh, through technology. In the context of the archipelago nation of the Philippines, um, agriculture is actually in a very bad shape. <clears throat> we actually met a smallholder farmer back when we were starting. And in our conversation with him, Ka Felix, in our conversation, actually mentioned that he had a couple of problems and challenges as a smallholder farmer. And it would always be two things. One, he would always have problems when it comes to accessing customers. So it's going to be a very distant market. Number two is it's they always experience an average adversarial buyer, meaning that the customer, even if he does have a customer, wouldn't be willing to purchase his produce at a very good price that would enable Cafelix to recover his cost of inputs and production. And so we ask ourselves the question, is this a broader challenge in Philippine agriculture? Is this really the state of agriculture in the Philippines? The Philippine Statistical Authority actually cited that a lot of our smallholder farmers, 10 million of them, are mostly self-employed, small, marginalized, and belong to the country's poorest of the poor. In fact, a third of the entire labor force in the Philippines actually belongs to the agriculture sector. So it's actually very ironic that about 10 million farmers are feeding an entire nation, and yet they're falling deeper into poverty. And this is where we came in as Mayani. We're solving a very fragmented, smaller farmers characterized Philippine agriculture, which has seen a lot of middlemen or intermediaries and also a huge data deficit in that agri supply chain. What we're doing is really unlock the $10 billion agriculture output value in the Philippines by consolidating the harvest of those farmers optimizing the agricultural supply chain and digitizing it end to end. In a lot of ways, since we started a little over 24 months ago, we did spark that tech revolution and disrupted the agri value chain for the better. Right now, we have extended our footprint to help out as many smallholder farmers as we can across the country and have mightily reshaped how ag food arrive at people's table. Right now, we're considered a leader in the Philippine farm to table space. We now power the agri supply chain of the likes of Shell, the likes of retail giants here, Walter Martin Robinson, and some of the biggest brands, even huge international NGOs like Rotaract and Caritas Manila. But across all those, you know, traction and the growth we've experiencing, we always remember our humble beginnings. We literally started from a garage. We were very young. We were very scrappy, but we were just very driven. We even squatted in someone else's basement parking. And when the opportunity knocked 
of us being able to represent the Philippines at the Rice Conference in Hong Kong, we did take that opportunity. And eventually, when COVID happened, we did collaborate even with the government, the Philippine Department of Agriculture, the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry, in providing that critical role to provide that continuity of the flow of food from provinces all the way to urban centers during the height of the Philippine lockdown. We never stopped there. We even expanded our footprint across helping farmers, Formosa, pineapple growers across the Philippines, and even collaborating with Southeast Asia's leading super app grab, and of course, the Philippine Department of Trade. We're also proud to share that we're also the first Philippine ag tech startup backed by the likes of Silicon Valley VCs, Ag Funder, and of course, Plug and Play, uh, from which our colleague Siwen uh, is hails from. <clears throat> One of our biggest inflection point was when we got the backing of the Asian Development Bank and we rose above 31 countries to cement our foothold in the Philippine agritech space. This is how and where our farmers' fresh produce uh, would go to right now, some of the biggest retailers uh, in the country. But something we're also proud of is the fact of the fact that we're driving social impact as a multiple of our commercial traction, 50% rise in attributable income, and at least 20% food loss reduction. Right now, the Philippines is touted as the fastest growing internet economy in Southeast Asia. And we know that there's a digital storm. We're riding on, on this one. And we know that there's a very bright prospect um, ahead. There are three things that I want to share in our journey from that small garage to where we are today in terms of tech, agriculture, and impact. <clears throat> one is we learned that farmers try out your solution because of relative advantage, but they really stick around because of the value continuity derived from it. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I remember in one of the talks, actually did that farmers farm because it's a business enterprise, right? Like they want to be able to turn their, their crops into cash. And something that we need to, be, to always recognize when it comes to solution building for these farmers is that they need to be able to see value and continuity of that value for them. Um, not just because it promises something in terms of relative advantage, but because there's stability of income, for instance, that you're able to provide to them. The second thing that we would say is growing imperative of going beyond feel good by modeling impact as a byproduct of revenue. The thing with Mayani and running this impact-driven platform is we get very, very clear on what are those key levers that drive impact um, for our business and the stakeholders which we seek to serve um, and empower. So in this case, you know, um, we've always taken a look at how the amount of, of post-harvest goods and fresh produce that we're able to um, move through the platform actually has this multiplier effect as to how the farmers would earn and, and the continuity and the stability of it. And the third is that, you know, the Philippines really is at crossroads right now. It is um, being walloped by this digital storm with agri-food and the cost of change. We have seen how a lot of states in Southeast Asia have actually embarked on an all-out war for food security and resiliency. And the Philippines is it an exception for that. Um, we have seen how the Philippine government, particularly the Department of Agriculture, has been very, very strong and adamant when it comes to saying that they want to build a resilient Philippines um, with prosperous with prosperous farmers and, and fisher folks. And I think right now, with the Philippines being touted as the fastest growing internet economy in the world, uh, in, in Southeast Asia, the social media capital of the world, um, very young population, over 100 million um, Filipinos, we think that this is, we're, 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 we're ripe for, for a digital storm. And we think that agri food is really ripe for that change, um, despite being considered a very traditional sector. So that's our story overall. And, you know, if uh, if there's any way that you want to raise some questions and collaborate uh, down the road, my email is jt at uh, We'd be more than happy to chat. Thanks, GT Solis, for sharing with us how small order farmers in the Philippines lead better lives by changing how people buy their food through e-commerce. So now let me introduce uh, to our uh, second speakers. Uh, uh, so Shi Wen is a future uh, agri-food enthusiast from China. She has years of experience in agriculture in Europe and America and holds the value of scientific and technological innovation transforming the agro-food sector. 
Ms. Ching Siwan is also specialized in agri-food technology trends, business development, and macro policy strategy. Welcome, Siwan. The floor is yours. I thank you. Uh, it's a great honor uh, to speak here as a representative of uh, uh, agri-food futurist in the Asia Network. And I would like to share some of our insights about how that we look at the food and the ag tech uh, business and also how that's as we are the early stage investors and what we look at this industry and how we could help out the startups. And uh, for me, I have studied many years of the agriculture and food supply chain. And after my graduation, I start my own entrepreneurship in the agricultural education program and the, also the media. And these two years, I was involved in the cooperative innovation and the early stage uh, investors in plug and play ag tech. And here I would like to share a uh, really few slides about what we are were doing. And we were the uh, the first batches of the incubation program in Silicon Valley. And 20 years ago that we successfully incubated some of the really successful uh, internet giant company. And after that, we built up our innovation ecosystem. Uh, basically, we were doing three things. Uh, we provide the uh, accelerator programs for the startups. It's totally free. And that is our mission to help the startups um, for them to get the corporate network and help them to with the next stage funding. And the second, we are also doing the corporate uh, innovation, such as in good and ag business, we're doing the service for the PepsiCo and Ferro and Bayer. And in that, that we find them the uh, suitable startups for them to doing the POC business. And third part, we are also doing the venture capital. And what I like about the plug and play China is that we also have some cross vertical um, engagement, such as uh, that we were combining also the health and also insure tech department for them to get involved in the food and ag tech business. So in this stage, the ag tech and food itself are not isolated from the whole ecosystem. And we all also need the other technology from the spin of over fact. And during um, a few years that we were gradually developed in a um, few uh, countries about food and ag tech. And I'm very honored to see that uh, from the past two years that's in China that we finally get up our key focus area about the ag tech, food tech, and also the supply chain. We will see that the uh, popular discussed area in the ag tech are mostly domain in the biotechnology uh, and also the noble farming system. And in food, there's the alternative protein is really a hot topic in the China, but uh, the market seems a little bit um, depressed uh, because the consumer acceptance and there is not very positively policy that was supported. However, that they are more attention will focus on the noble ingredients and the specialities. Uh, together, we will also focus on the health and also sustainability related subject. And uh, what we see as the early stage uh, investors that we are putting a lot of the efforts in the study of the fundamental research um, because you were focusing on the original innovation. It has to be driven by the fundamental research. And when they uh, gradually developed into the applied science um, that we see a lot of the uh, talents that they have the motivation to be involved in the startup stage and also they have the entrepreneur spirit and they got involved in the industry and that is the one uh, early stage investor that get involved that we offer them help about how to design the companies and how do they choose the business model and especially about their prototype and when you choose the prototype and how to do the market fit about that 
And here is some research that we did from the past 10 years about the National Science Department that they were doing the large focus. We could see that they are a lot of the uh, development on the uh, genetic improvement. And these are the next two to three years, the most important part for the China agriculture, that we are going to transforming the whole supply chain in the beginning of the um, the breeding of that, such as that we were improving some trace about the uh, pest control and also the productivity. And we would like to make the... Um, plants that are more adaptive to such a climate warming world. And here are there also some um, topics about um, the bioomics and also the food safety issues. And uh, here we would like to focus more on the three criteria to determine what we call as the disruptive uh, innovation technology in ag food tech. Uh, so uh, we believe that there is a lot of the innovation that was coming from the other industry, such as the um, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, so in the agriculture that we will use it more on the uh, discovery platform or uh, breeding assistant program. And the second that we will uh, put more efforts in searching for the technology that they could improve the efficiency above the 10 times and also that they could eliminate the key points of the whole uh, industry and that will make the industry totally transformed and disruptive and that will leave the more space for the new players to enter in the markets and third that we believe that the traditional VC uh, institutes are getting more and more difficult to uh, invest in the ag food business because it takes a long time and it needs a lot of the resource actually to really help up the startups and make them grow. Um, so we uh, are calling for our partners uh, to first uh, to be more patient about the food and ag tech business. And the secondly, we would like to pay more uh, resource into the incubation program and the after service of the uh, investment. And here are some uh, uh, technology clusters that we are also calling for the partners to have more attention on that. Um, because you see nowadays that in the COVID world, it is very uncertain. So technology become more and more emerging that we are um, putting more attention in the biotech, especially in this year, uh, like the thin um, bio for the agri-food uh, and also the precise uh, fermentation and the, also the uh, microbiotics uh, potential. It's really during a lot of the um, deals activities of that and such as the informatics that people are using uh, the robotics and the, also the software to help them to improve the efficiency of the labor work and also that to make the uh, transparent food manufacturing system and for the new materials that China has uh, already raised a lot of the awareness about the sustainability and the, also the environment-friendly care. So uh, we believe that the waste recovery and also edible material in the packaging will be the trend in the next uh, 10 years. And also for the uh, renewable energy that we are calling more and more clean uh, bioenergy in our system to that. And this is the report that um, we have in 2020 uh, for the U.S. team that we speak of like uh, six uh, sectors uh, for USA that is growing, uh, surviving for the 
uh, startups. However, uh, it is a research rooted in the USA. I believe that it brought a lot of the future insights for China uh, to really uh, focus on that, uh, such as the uh, indoor vertical farming. We need to build up like the uh, urban food uh, system to fight for this uh, a fragile uh, food supply chain. And also the livestock farming technology should ensure that we have the health and the reliable uh, supply chain uh, to the table of our children. And the last slides I would like to show you that the Chinese government also put a lot of the policy to support uh, agriculture and food sector. So the general was saying that um, we need to put more and more powers in the fundamental research, especially we need to make the scientists to have the independent and free uh, academia atmosphere to do the research. And that is driving a lot of the uh, surviving entrepreneurs of that. And the second that... Um, we need to put more respect and uh, be more tolerant for the technology-driven startups. And for uh, what we see as the uh, most exciting areas in the early investments, here I present you for the genomics, uh, synthetic biology, smart agriculture, and the biomass utilization. Um, these two topics are highly related to the uh, health environment of the human being, and that also will ensure uh, that a common well of our mankind. Yeah, and that is almost lost. Thank you. Thanks, Yuan, for sharing example of disruptive innovation in food and ag tech and how fundamental research matters because it set up grounds for applied science and built up foundation of tech startups. Now let me introduce you to our last speaker from India. Mr. Amandi Panwar is an aeronautical engineer and a co-founder of Bharat Rohan, which is a vertically integrated agri-tech company focused on enable farmers to grow profitably using decision support system based on hyperspectral imaging technology for sustainable and safe food supply chain. In February 2021, he was also recognized by Forbes India on the 30 under 30 list. Welcome, Amandeep. Amandi. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ravindra. Uh, thank you uh, for all the great presentations that we had. Uh, it's really inspiring to see all this. Uh, so a little background about me. Uh, I was also glad to be here and to have this opportunity to talk about Bharat Rohan. Uh, and we, uh, as you rightly mentioned, we are on a mission to which uh, we embarked uh, six years ago to revitalize farming uh, with technology for a transparent and uh, you know and safe food supply chain. Um, Rishabh and I, uh, Rishabh is uh, you know another co-founders at Bharat Rohan. Uh, we both uh, were classmates in college uh, while pursuing aeronautical engineering uh, in uh, one of the states, uh, Uttar Pradesh state of India, and we used to fly drones. Uh, you know, in the nearby farmer fields. And that is when we actually got to interact with a lot of farmers and empathize with the challenges and the issues they were facing. Um, so we realized that, you know, farmers had no access to uh, a tool that would actually help them make the right decisions at the right time. And there was no service that could actually help them diagnose a crop uh, in the early stages. Uh, while there were many remote sensing based solutions available uh, for the crop insurance companies, for banks, for financial institutions, um, and for the governments, there was no uh, you know, real tool that could uh, farmers use uh, directly to actually help them uh, in, a, in the profitable uh, cultivation. So that is uh, something that we uh, you know, then started to build. Uh, we started to build a solution that could directly benefit the farmers and help them uh, reduce the cost of uh, agri inputs and minimize the crop losses. Uh, and uh, you know, just to give you some, uh, throw some uh, real facts uh, around here. Uh, so this is uh, you know widely known that uh, nearly 14% of India's population uh, sleeps hungry every night. Uh, but it, uh, ironically, close to $500 billion worth of crops are lost due to pest attacks and disease outbreaks every year. 
and you know farmers see no alternative to save their crops uh, you know from these losses but to use pesticides in their fields and with the lack of a decision support system and effective advisory they tend to overuse these chemicals which in turn end up uh, getting into the food that we eat as consumers and thereby creating a pressure on them to reduce the usage of the chemicals however uh, you know excessive usage of chemicals um, also increases the cost of cultivation which makes uh, you know farming uh, unsustainable and unprofitable uh, so much so that you know average monthly income of an agriculture household in india is around 133 dollars uh, 37 is the income from the crop production Uh, so this dismal cycle uh, you know of loss and hazard was something uh, we wanted to you know actually tackle and resolve and uh, you know the other part of the story is that there are institutions uh, and buyers um, both in domestic and international markets in the need of pesticide residue free farm products and are willing to pay a premium for it and the fmcg companies in india lose huge volume of export income while uh the cargo containing the spices and you know other uh, food items get rejected in the international markets uh so the reason uh, you know that primarily uh, behind this is that the samples of the shipment contain high residues pesticide residues um uh, and furthermore uh, most of them are detected with residues of non approved pesticides so we spoke to many uh, of such customers and potential uh, you know clients and all of them got excited to imagine a world where uh, they could purchase residue free crop produce uh, from a supplier who also provides them with a user friendly digital tool to trace uh, their sustainable crop production and uh, you know just to add to this um, you know indian food exports are getting rejected in foreign markets due to you know high residue levels um, and also the immediate there is an immediate need um, you know for us to you know to change the system and that is exactly what bharatron is working towards uh, and we wish to become one of the largest exporters of uh, pesticide resistant farm products uh, you know in india um, so uh, what we have started to build at bharatron is that we are uh, making the uh, you know this imagination a reality and uh, you know by overhauling the complete agriculture value chain and reimagining how crops are produced so uh, we monitor crops every 10 days uh, with our drones uh, mounted with hyperspectral cameras this helps us in early diagnosis of pest attacks uh, disease outbreaks and nutrient deficiencies and suggesting farmers with actionable measures um, that are required to be taken um, we use hyperspectral imaging because it can detect and uh, you know diagnose very minuscule color changes again in, in, into a plant um and we can identify uh, a particular pest attack even in the early stage before there is any visible manifestation and uh, then make the uh, necessary recommendation to the farmer then we also have a you know uh, outdoor program where farmers engage with us um and with technology as an anchor uh, we offer uh, you know this program where farmers are farmers are able to get the advisory right from the stage of pre-sowing until the harvest and uh, we also buy back their produce uh, you know when the, it is ready for the uh, you know uh, so ready to be sold so this program ensures that they use only the rested agri inputs which bharat rohan is suggesting and um, also so that bharat rohan can trace uh, and track each and every farm activity um, and ensure that there is sustainable cultivation and the practices are being followed on the ground Uh, so that we can actually provide that kind of traceability and right kind of produce to our buyers um then then uh, you know the institutional buyers um, you know they require traceability and this is one of the very important uh, you know tool for them so to ensure this we assign a qr code to each and every farmer which is also attached to the lots or bags which are procured from them uh, these qr codes are then scanned to fetch the data regarding the practices that have been followed on the ground and uh, and also during the cultivation um so the institutional buyers who actually purchase the agriculture produce from us um get a complete digital tool uh, which has various features right uh, from planning to scheduling then to see, seeing the farmer profile uh, also to understanding uh, you know what kind of agri inputs have been used on the field also uh, visualizing uh, what kind of drone and satellite based monitoring has uh, been conducted and what recommendations have been provided to the farmer and then they can also make a price indent and purchase the commodity uh, you know right from uh, the tool itself 
Uh, so our bigger, uh, you know, revenues are by, uh, you know, bifurcated in two, uh, which is sale of agri inputs and procurement of agri purchase uh, commodity and selling to large buyers. Um, you know, there are major uh, FMCG companies and modern retailers in India who are working with us. Uh, we are uh, selling our, the farm produce from our farmers to you know, these buyers. And now uh, we are eyeing for the international market as well. Uh, we're also working with various agri input companies to sell their product as well as to help them with their uh, biostatistical studies. Um, so our, um, you know, the entire, you know, effort is towards making farmers climate resilient um, to help them with the pest and disease forewarning, to help them reduce their crop losses, help them reduce the you know, agri inputs. Um, and overall, uh, when we provide all these services, they end up earning more than what they have been doing before without Bharat Rohan's intervention. And this extra saving is, you know, they can put in for the extra you know, emergency use or to for the education of the children or to, you know, overall uplift their lives, uh, you know, uh, from their previous version. So the kind of impact that we have been able to deliver, uh, you know, as you can see on the left, uh, you know, the farmer who was not uh, basically a subscriber of uh, Farah's own services, you can see his crop is completely damaged because he did not make uh, you know, uh, use of right kind of agri input at the right time. And uh, his crop was completely damaged by a hopper burn in the paddy field. Uh, whereas on the right, uh, you know, the crop is completely safe uh, from the brown plant hopper pest and uh, it's ready for harvest. Um, also in terms of uh, you know, the numbers, we um, you know, are able to save uh, close to you know, uh, 20,000 rupees uh, for crops like cumin uh, for our farmers. Uh, we have been supported by uh, you know, major, uh, you know, uh, good names in the industry in India, um, you know, and we are also, you know, very, very well funded with the supply chain finance institutions uh, you know, across the industry. Uh, we have a team of aeronautical engineers, hyperspectral imaging experts, and, uh, you know, agronomist and we are now looking to hire uh, you know more people towards the supply chain uh, you know, business which is mostly for the sales and procurement segment um, we are happy to uh, you know collaborate with uh, you know, uh, different startups and companies across asia and uh, other different com countries um, and also looking for uh, you know, new talent to join us uh, so looking forward to you know long-term associations with different institutions uh, happy to collaborate uh, wherever uh, there is a chance. Thank you so much for having me here. Thanks, Amandeep, for sharing how Bharat Rohan Airborne Innovations, a knowledge company in India, who mitigates the risk in agriculture by providing an integrated solution for diagnostic of fields and crops. So now it's time for uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, so let me start uh, with these first questions to all uh, panelists, how emerging technologies such as AI we have discussed uh, uh, in your presentations can positively impact the future of agriculture and also being a game uh, changer. Perhaps uh, Shiwei, you, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Uh, I believe nowadays AI could play a uh, more and more important role, uh, such as the AI supported decision in making the neighbor arrangement and also predict the productivity. And the, in the breeding program, AI could definitely play a really big role in uh, designing the program and also uh, detect the traits. And also for the VR program that we are discussing a very uh, interesting scenario, it's for the uh, children and also the uh, students for them to learn about uh, diagnosis of the animal health. Yeah. Thanks, Yuan. Did you Suris, perhaps a thought on that? I think it's changing um, and, and sweeping different regions right now. Like in the case of Southeast Asia, in the case of Philippines, because of the massive data that we are now gathering um, from the grassroots, I think that is where AI and machine learning would really come into play in terms of how do you process that big uh, multiple thousands of data points and be able to translate it into actionable insights um, such that it can serve as the bedrock for us to be able to build solutions um, for farmers. You know, um, 
one of the things we're looking at for Mayani has always been a lot the delivery of last mile financial services to farmers um, beyond being so therefore becoming sort of a full service integrated marketplace uh, for smaller farmers. So so the things we were thinking is how do we leverage the trade data and the commercial data that we have on the platform uh, to be able to to deliver uh, financial services and access to credit uh, for farmers. I you know I believe uh, our colleague here. Um, Amandeep, for instance, uh, you know, from, from, from India has been working on a lot of supply chain finance services. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that, um, for sure, uh, you know, the likes of them would already consider big data and AI and machine learning when it comes to leveraging uh, those data and, and, and innovating and building better, uh, products for, for farmers. Thank you, Tisulis. Amandeep? Yeah, uh, so adding to what uh, 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 what has been said by JT, so uh, basically um, imaging uh, proves to be, uh, you know, a data provider for a large scale uh, you know, land holdings. So what we uh, actually want uh, is that, you know, suppose uh, there is a microfinance institution who is uh, providing loans to you know, you know certain group of farmers and then, uh, you know, whether they want to, uh, first there is a credit check. So especially in say, countries like India, there are uh, you know a lot of uh, challenges that that these kind of situations face, uh, particularly in understanding where actually their land is, uh, you know, for which they are basically processing the loans. So for that, um, they need geotagging. Then they want to see, um, you know, say how their crop is going to going, it has been performing from last few years and how it could perform in the coming years, so that they can actually understand whether the uh, you know, le- uh, lender would be able to repay the loan or not. So, you know, these kind of, uh, you know, use cases are extremely relevant for uh, the agri-tech. Uh, then especially, in, then you know, as I have uh, already presented regarding, uh, you know, using imagery for pest and disease, uh, you know, forecasting, uh, you know, ex- extremely adding value to the farmer's life. Uh, so, uh, it, I think imagery, uh, you know, is going to be the next big thing for uh, agriculture and uh, AI, uh, you know, always, uh, you know, always comes hand to hand with uh, imagery because we need to we need AI to process the image and understand and make sense out of it. Um, so I think that's that's extremely relevant and uh, you know, yeah. So that that would be uh, you know, extremely important for us to you know integrate in uh, different different forms. Thanks, Mandeep. So before we end uh, the sessions, let me uh, ask a, a last questions. Uh, because I know that there is some entrepreneurs uh, who are uh, watching our webinar and also in, in, in our network, uh, and they will be happy to hear from you from your answer. So my second question is, what are the major challenges faced by agri-tech startup and entrepreneur uh, in this area? So Shiwen, I think you are well positioned to answer to, to this question, looking at what you're doing right now. Yeah, uh, actually, I get a really uh, deep feeling about that questions. Most Excellent. of the uh, architect startups that we've seen, we've noticed that the scientists take a domain mm-hmm. role in the uh, CEO or management level of that. However, uh, when the startups was actually uh, before the round B, I think the uh, product itself play uh, the most uh, uh, crucial role. Uh, so at this stage, uh, the uh, challenges shall be that whether the prototype fits the uh, key uh, enterprise needs of that and whether you have the ability to transfer the technology into a product that which the market needs. So when the startup um, gradually grow from the round B to the next stage, I believe the team itself play a larger role. It was testing its operation ability and also the sales branding itself and sometimes globalization itself. And there are also some uncertain challenges will appear, such as the policy, the outside environment. So uh, in the later stage, I think that there are more and more factors could be involved. Um, so I believe if you were talking about the startup stage, I hope that the team will have more diverse ability and also the uh, team members 
to also make a really good value to the early startup. Yeah. Thanks, Xiu. And yeah, team and technology, it's a, it's a challenging part. Uh, uh, you're right. So now let me ask the same question to Amandi. Uh, it's, it's good to have your, your perspective and, and perhaps also focus on, on India as well. Yeah, I think um, you know, one of the major challenges that we as, uh, you know, as agri-tech startups face is uh, you know, convincing farmers, uh, you know, because our biggest competition is apathy. Uh, you know, so I think changing that perspective that uh, you know, they don't even realize that there's a problem. Um, you know, if you go to go, ahead, go to them and uh, you know, tell them that you know, your crop, how much uh, you know, uh, crop are you losing because of a pest or disease, they don't even do th- such calculations. So they have just taken it for granted that every year, the twenty thirty percent crop is going to be lost because of you know certain crop issue. Um, so actually convincing them, uh, demonstrating the use of technology, uh, you know, to demonstrate them, uh, you know, how uh, much they can save uh, by actually you know, bringing a technology piece uh, into their value chain, uh, you know, it's how it is going to transform their lives. Actually, that is the biggest challenge. And that's, I think, one of the ma- major responsibilities that we also have as, as founders, uh, you know, uh, working towards, uh, you know, agriculture. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know, the other uh, pieces wherein, uh, you know, agriculture is always a vast industry in wherever country we go. Uh, so, we have to integrate multiple solutions to get this, uh, you know, and then offer it as a bundled uh, package to the to the farmers or if to the any other cust- uh, stakeholder whom we are dealing with. So you know, uh, that is something that we, I have actually realized that uh, you know, is the greatest challenge and a very interesting opportunity for us uh, as agri tech uh, you know, companies as well. Thanks, Amandeep. How about you, GT Solis? Yeah, it's almost um, on the same line as Amon, right? Like what he mentioned, number one, adoption. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's that's the thing with emerging Asia. And it's just a good thing that in terms of the macro climate, um, you're seeing, um, you know, new people on board into the internet. Like COVID as, as a catalyst, it has accelerated digital adoption across different segments. Even our farmers here in the Philippines now have been using a lot of uh, the apps, Facebook Messenger, you know, they use Viber. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Um, so it's a, it's an opportunity and at the same time a challenge. The second one would be a fight for talent. Um, not a lot of talent gets drawn to agriculture because they do have a perception and a notion that it's very arcane and tra- very traditional. Um, but, but I guess that's changing. Um, you know, agritech startups across the world um, from, from India being led by Amandeep and of course uh, Zewen uh, through Plug and Play being the world's largest, uh, you know, early stage investor has contributed to educating the broader market when it comes to ag tech and food tech as as viable, very good verticals, you know, something that where you could you devote your talent to, right? And I think third one is uh, access to funding and capital, um, you know, but but I also, but also that's evolving right now. Um, we're seeing more and more ag tech uh, deals and food tech deals being executed um, across regions in in Asia. Very particular, um, you know, we've seen the likes of Pinduoduo in China, which has always been a very good example and a model for a lot of the ag tech startups uh, in in the entire region. So that's uh, so that's very good. Thanks, uh, Gigi Solis. Yeah, you, you're right that uh, access to capital is also one uh, main challenge uh, that uh, all entrepreneurs uh, are facing in. So thanks uh, all again to our guest speakers, Shi Wen from China, Amandi from India, and Gigi Solis from the Philippines for this engaging conversations and also to all our participants and our sponsor area, the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia. Thanks all again and see you next time. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.